your hymnals to the opening hymn. Let us begin by singing the first two verses of hymn 904, Blessed Jesus at your word. Salve! 
salvation is far from the wicked. For they do not seek your statutes. Great is your mercy, O Lord. Give me life according to your just decrees. Many are my persecutors and my adversaries. But I do not serve with your testimonies. I look at the faithless with disgust. Because they do not keep your commands. Consider how I love your precepts. The sound of your word is true. And every one of your justice and righteous decrees endures forever. Let us continue by singing the glory of Audrey as it's found on the top of page 186 in the front of the hymnal. Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord 
predict the words that you have prophesied come true. And bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. Yet, hear now this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes to pass, then we know that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. This is the word of the Lord. The admission reading for us this morning, order for us in the seventh chapter of Romans, verses 1 and 13, starting with the first verse. Do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law. The law is binding on a person only as long as he lives. Thus, a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law. And she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law, to the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused by the law, or at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve not under the old written code, but in the new life of the Spirit. What then shall we say? The law is sin? By no means. Yet, if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had not said, You shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covenants. Apart from the law, sin, doth, sin lies dead. I was once alive, apart from the law. But when the commandment came, sin came alive and I died. The very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me. For sin, seizing an opportunity to the commandment, deceived me, and through it killed me. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, and righteous and good. Did that which is good, then, bring death to me? By no means. It was sin, producing death in me, through what is good. And or that sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. This is the word of the Lord.
but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. The one who receives a righteous person, because he is a righteous person, will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water, because he is a disciple. Purely I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. This is the gospel of the Lord.
from our living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for today's invitation comes to us from the gospel lesson. <laughs> Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. This is the gospel of the Lord. Consider these words spoken by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and penned by St. Matthew, the blessed apostle, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Divine the theme of this invitation is the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit. The Word of God is an awesome gift that God has given to us. It is His thoughts. It is His truth. It is His power. It is His power because His Son, Jesus, is the living Word of God. In the first chapter of the Gospel of John, it's written, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Later on in verse 14, it's written, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, so that we could behold the glory of the One and the Only. Jesus is the living Word of God. So Jesus is the law of the Ten Commandments. And Jesus is also the gospel that has fulfilled the law. So Jesus is the sword of the Spirit. As the word of God goes forth in the world and comes down from above, it goes forth with God's truth. And as it comes down and invades our fallen and broken world as a sword, it slices through and severs through the lies and deceit of the old evil fall, through the lies and deceit of the fallen, broken world in which you and I live. And it leaves God's truth. John 17, 17 is sanctified by your truth. Your word is truth. And so if you want to know the truth, the absolute truth, the truth from God's point of view. Want to know the truth about God? Want to know the truth about yourself and mankind? Want to know the truth about sin and forgiveness? Want to know the truth about the powers above the holy angels or the powers below Satan and the demons? Want to know the truth about death and resurrection and everlasting life? The Word of God would be a good place to go. Because the word of God is the truth, the sword of the spirit. As the word of God goes forth into the world as the sword of the spirit, St. Paul, the blessed apostle, reminds us in the epistles that the sword of the spirit is a two-edged sword, sharp as a razor on both sides, severing and cutting first one way and then severing and cutting the other way, to the law and the gospel. As the Holy Spirit swings his sword the one way to the law, he shows us our sin. The law severs and cuts through our sinful flesh, our sinful mind, our sinful heart. And it shows us our sin, the things we want to say or not what we say, the things we want to do or not what we do. And as it shows us our sin, it then gives to us as God's holy people sorrow for our sins. And where faith gets us to confess our sins to our God. And realizing that as you and I confess our sins to our God, what we are doing as his holy people is we are giving to Jesus all of our sins with all of our guilt and iniquity and all the sins committed against us with all the suffering and shame, and saying to Jesus, Jesus here, this belongs to you, you take it. And no one better, Jesus takes it, and takes all those sins and puts them on his shoulders, and goes to the cross, and dies. And when he dies, they all die with him. He turns around and he says, you are forgiven. And that's the gospel. And that's the Holy Spirit going to the law and the gospel of the word. That's the sword of the spirit. In the 
gospel lesson for today, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the teacher, he comes to you and me as his holy people, and he speaks the truth in love. And the truth is, you and I are his holy people. You and I are Christians. The truth is, we do have faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior and Redeemer. And the truth is that we hold fast to his word and his way and his will. Fully realizing that his word and his way and his will is the exact opposite of the word and the way and the will of the fallen, broken world in which you and I live. In the gospel, let's pray Jesus the teacher as he speaks the truth in love. He talks about the fact that because you and I are a Christian, you and I are like him. Which means that you and I have to carry our cross and our cross is for him. Every Christian must suffer for Christ. And Jesus even goes to the point of talking about what it means to be even worthy enough to carry the cross for Christ. And he continues speaking the truth in love, telling you and me that even our family members will become our enemies. The truth is, whenever you put two or more people in a time at the same time and place and space, there's going to be different opinions and there's going to be different perspectives. And when it comes to family and living with family, the truth is, there's plenty of reasons for me and every one of you to be forgiven. And there's plenty of reasons for us to forgive our family members. And Jesus, the teacher, he continues to speak the truth and love. And as he does, he reminds us our God has created us as being social beings. Every one of us has a need to love. Every one of us has a need to be loved, to be in community, to be in family with family members, to be with the family of our friends. But Jesus also warns us then, the problem with all this is sometimes our friends and sometimes our family members can become the most important thing. Jesus reminds us this day, nothing comes between our God and us. Nothing and nobody. So nothing and nobody should come between us and our God. What Jesus is saying in the Gospel lesson for today is that if we hold up a family member or one of our family and friends as being the most important thing, we are breaking the first commandment. We are making that which is created more important than the Creator. And the first commandment stands, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall fear, love, and trust in God above all other things. But we're caught betwixt and between the two. We need to be loved. And we need to love by our family members and for our family members and our family's friends. And we all have this in the flesh, so we love all children. And that's the Holy Spirit of working the law. We consider Jesus being the Word of God, the law of the gospel. We find the law of the gospel also being present at his death and resurrection, the cross, and the empty tomb. So here's the deal. It begins with you and God. And God comes to you and says to you, when he gives you the Ten Commandments, I expect you and demand you to keep all the Ten Commandments perfectly by thought and by word and by deed. I can do it, and you can do it. Because of the sinful flesh. Because of the sinful flesh, we say things we don't want to say and do things that we do not want to do. So the love of the Heavenly Father sent His Son down from love to the outside, to be conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, to be full of God and holy man as our Savior. And being full of God and holy man, Jesus perfectly kept the Ten Commandments for you and me as our substitute and as our replacement. And then as our substitute replacement, 
He went to the cross to be punished for our sins. So you and I are not punished for our sins. But rather because of the cross, he gave up all of his life and body and blood. He paid the ransom price in full, the redeeming price in full, defeating all of sin, all of Satan, all of death for you and me, even for all eternity, so you and I can have life and forgiveness and salvation. And that's the gospel. And that is the center of the Word of God. And that is the nucleus of the sword of the Spirit. As you and I look at history, you find that all events in history remain submitted in time except for one. The death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which in the scriptures is considered to be one eternal event. It transcends all time places and spaces and remains even for all eternity and it travels through time. You and I as God's holy people we believe in the real presence of Christ. So that's when we come to the Lord's house on the Lord's day to come into the real presence of Christ. So we the perishable can touch the imperishable. So we the immortal so we the mortal can touch the immortal. And as that happened, know that you and I first have to be bought in Christ to be gospel in Christ. First have to die in Christ to be resurrected in Christ. First have to be brought down in Christ to be raised up in Christ. So you and I can be washed and cleansed and purified of all of our sins and all the sins committed against us. And so you and I can be changed as the perishable touches the imperishable and the mortal touches the immortal. Change and transform, so you and I are no longer formed the pattern of the fallen of the world, and you and I become a new creation of Christ. To love the Lord our God with our heart and soul and mind, and love our neighbor as ourselves. And all this is the Holy Spirit working through His sword, the law on one side and the gospel. Now, as it comes down to you and me, Jesus reminds us that there are some things in the world that just are. The sky is blue. The grass is green. The sun provides light and warmth. The water is wet. And as you and I have to carry our cross and our cross for Christ, Jesus reminds us to say, you and I are also soldiers of the cross. We are warriors. We are gladiators. And we are soldiers of Jesus, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. It is just the way it is. As you and I are soldiers of Christ, it's good for us to take one step back and consider the high-end elite soldiers we have in our armed forces. The Army Rangers, the Navy SEALs, the Special Ops Marines, and Air Force guys. The ones who are always ready to fight, and always ready to be deployed, and always ready for warfare. As you look at those special soldiers, realize that when there is no fighting, they're not just sitting around and drinking coffee and watching Oprah on TV. That's not what they do. They are good soldiers, and so they prepare to continue to be good soldiers. They get up in the morning, one of the first things they do is they run eight miles a day. They get into martial arts, practice hand-to-hand -hand combat. They go down to the firing range, and they shoot off guns so they remain to be a good shot, and even a better shot. They get into playing war games. They use computers and software and hardware to go through tactics and strategies to be good soldiers. Now it comes down to you and me. One of the cross that we have to bear is being a soldier for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. As we consider the disciplines and routines of those high-end elite soldiers, it's good for us as God's people to also continue to get into those disciplines and routines. 
St. Paul, the blessed apostle, tells us in Ephesians 5, put on the full armor of God. And that's every day. The helmet of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shield of faith, picking up the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. Because you and I, as soldiers, we also have to fight against the old fall and the principalities of darkness. And those are spiritual enemies. And not use physical gifts to fight spiritual enemies. Have to use spiritual weapons. And have to use the biggest and baddest spiritual weapon we have. And the biggest and baddest spiritual weapon we have is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. His death and resurrection. He conquered and defeated all the powers of darkness and Satan all the demons, even for all eternity. So we come to the Lord's house on the Lord's day to be filled with Christ and to be filled with us. As we stand in his presence, we hear the old familiar voice and the old familiar words. And it's good for you and me, soldiers of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, to keep up with our daily devotions, to be in God's word, to go back and remember our baptism each day, so you and I can be refreshed and restored and renewed and reconciled. It's good for you and I to fill ourselves up with good things, the good things of God and the holy things of God, and not the bad things of the world, like doubts and fears and worries and cares. So get into God's word. Remember your baptism. Go back to the classics. Get into Bach and Beethoven and Mozart and Brahms. Get into the good contemporary Christian hymns. Get into singing the old Lutheran liturgy and the old Lutheran hymns because they are the word of God, the sword of the spirit. And as you sing, sing good. And I'll try to do the same because singing is the language of the angels. As you pray, praise and give thanks, the angels are singing right along with you. And according to the Psalms, as we pray, praise, and give thanks, we are filled with Jesus, who becomes our strength in times of weakness. We are filled with Jesus, who gives to us the patience to wait for his will to be done in your life and my life. It's part of the process you and I have to carry for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's part of being a Christian soldier of Jesus, the King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. And finally, remember this. As we are soldiers of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, there is also one soldier who is above us, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The great warrior, shepherd, king. <coughs> he knows all about fighting. He knows all about battle. He knows all about warfare. He made the cross his battlefield, where he engageth the enemy and defeat our enemies of sin and Satan and death. As you and I make our pilgrimage from the baptismal font to the promised land, Jesus, the great warrior shepherd king, comes right along with us, connected to you and me, shoulder to shoulder, hip to hip, kneecap to kneecap, and shin to shin. Welded, super glued, velcroed, and duct tape. And as he goes with us, he is there to be by our side. So the times our crosses become too heavy for us to carry, and he carries them for us. Just like Simon of Cyrene carried his cross to Golgotha. He remains by our side to pick us up when we have fallen down, to carry us when we are too weak to go on. He remains by our side to whisper in our ears and you know, as you and I have to face the doubts and fears and worries and cares and trials and tribulations of this life and this world to whisper, do not fear, do not be afraid. I am here and I am here for you all day and all the way. He reminds us that he is our strength in all times of weakness. He takes our bad in order to give to us his good. He is the one who is always our refuge, always a safe place to go and a safe place to be. 
He is the one to whom all power and authority in the heavens and the earth have been given. For him there is no problem to be again handle it, nor any concern too small. Because he is your warrior, good shepherd and king, and you are his. That's what's all about Jesus. And this is your Jesus. Your Jesus who is the great warrior, shepherd, king. Your Jesus who is the word of God, all the law and all the gospel that's fulfilled the law. Your Jesus who is the sword of the spirit. Your Jesus, the one you and I can always count on, always depend upon, always trust in, no matter what. Today, tomorrow, and even for all of eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. Now the peace of God that passes like human understanding, may it pledge your faith like everlasting. Amen. Let us stand and sing the creation name. stand for the prayers of the church. Let us pray for all people God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, in your mercy, what a wife that Logan Shepherd and John Barely. We thank you for your goodness for them to be grateful you have mercifully given to them strength, friends, relatives, pledges above all, your gospel promise of peace and forgiveness. Dear Lord, as these your servants mark the passing of one year and the beginning of a new year, crowd shall fetch mercy upon them through your burdened sacraments. Lord, in your mercy. What a wife that Junior Pullman, Wayne Needham, Noel Rapp, Pauline Fretz, Janet Stuckwich, Bev Rappy. Arlen Rappi, Halen Rapp, Dan Hauer, and her baby. I grace you receive healing and strength from you. That they with us might be thankful in sickness and health. And my grant the strength to accept your will 
for their death and eternal lives, visit them in their afflictions, and empower them through your word and the promise of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Heavenly Father, as I put before this flock, I give all glory and thanks to you for the blessings of their marriage, and that their continued years might be a time of ever going love for each other and for you. Remind them that you are the source of all their blessings. You continue to promise husbands and wives that marriage is an honorable state sanctified by you. Lord, in your mercy. All powerful Creator, we praise you for blessing the earth to make it fruitful, bringing forth in abundance whatever is needed to the support of our lives. Cross we employ you the work of ranchers and farmers, and grant us a probing weather of sunshine and rain. May both have a seed time and a gathering of the fruits of the earth, thus proclaiming your goodness with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have given to us this good land as our heritage. Grant that we remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, truthful education, and an honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil course of action. May God who came from many nations with many different languages, a united people. Defend our liberties, and give to those who we have entrusted with authority of government, most especially President Joe Biden and the members of the U.S. Congress and the Justice of the Supreme Court, the spirit of wisdom, that there may be justice and peace in our land. When times are prosperous, let our hearts be thankful, and in troubled times, do not let our trust in you fail. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Heavenly Father, this day we ask you of those who serve us, our paramedics, EMTs, firemen, policemen, and most of those who don't serve in our armed forces. May you watch over those who watch over us. May you protect those who protect us. May you give your servants strength and bravery to serve with you and us with courage and honor, that we can live quietly and in peace without fear, and also that the gospel of Jesus Christ be proclaimed to the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your hands, O oh Lord, we bring all whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the service of the sack of the preface, starting at the top of page 194 in the front of the hymnal. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts.
our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave disciples and said, to him, This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave him saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This is not be drinking in remembrance of me.